Jesus gave a little thing on these downloads when he, he talked about in the Bible, you shall know them by their fruits. Um, I like that. You shall know them by their fruits. In other words, you shall know them by, by the way they live their life. Um, one time I think I was reading Gandhi's autobiography and somebody was kind of following him around and saying, they, they, they were following him, they saw that he was kind of open-minded. He would fit really nice, Gandhi would fit well into this community. He was very eclectic, even though he was raised Hindu, he was fascinated by Christianity and Islam, you know, he, he was well-read and he was very open-minded and he was also practicing and experimenting being intuitive. He called his whole life an experiment, a, a experiment with truth. I like that. I like, also I like transparency. I love how Gandhi, you know, published a newsletter. I loved how he did all this journaling when he was in prison his whole life and, and how he published it to the world. He was transparent. Um, I find that that's another very helpful way of really getting in touch with the truth. How I feel is very, very peaceful and very, very joyful, like a swirling happy energy in my heart, at the core of my being. And to me, that's the simplest answer, is when you really have that deep feeling in the core of your being, that's the acknowledgement. If the truth is within and you feel in harmony with that, then that's, that's like the affirmation or the confirmation of that. Also, it, I find it very helpful to be transparent, so I, over the years, have been extremely transparent. I've done what people call hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of public gatherings in all different parts of the world on different continents, in which I let everybody just raise any question you want. And don't worry about asking me too personal of a question. I'm transparent. I'll give you a straight answer. Whatever the question is, don't hold back. That's been an accelerated path <laughs> to discernment. <laughs> Uh, because the ego is saying, you've got a private life, and then you've got a, a public life. Some people don't want a public life at all, but what we're saying is life is life. Life doesn't have anything to hide. Life can be totally transparent. I've even heard people tell me, um, there was a priest one time, who, who was a priest for many years, and, and he said, David, I would have people come to me and ask me questions, in the confessional, they'd confess things and ask me questions, and whenever I didn't know the answer to what they were asking, this priest would say, God is a mystery. <laughs> that was his answer. <laughs> he says, but I sense from you, there's nothing mysterious about this. Uh, you keep talking about how God wants to openly reveal God. There's, God isn't hiding or holding anything back, trying to keep anything mysterious. God is openly revealing, and I thought, yeah, I like that. I, I want to be like, like God in that way. So, I think that transparency is beautiful. I know somebody recently wrote some books on enlightenment, and um, it seemed to be kind of like a ghostwriter on enlightenment, because when people would try to contact the author, they couldn't get a hold of the author. The author never did any public gatherings, never went out, it was just like words on a page, and nobody could find the author <laughs> and, and talk to him. Of course, you know, some authors have written stuff many centuries ago. I, I like transparency, so we use Facebook and Twitter and, and Ning and, and write stuff and speak stuff. All the stuff that we're talking about now goes on the internet for people to access freely, freely, freely. And that's another thing that I appreciate about truth. It's freely given and, you, and it's a free gift. It's, it, it doesn't cost anything and also there's 100% responsibility with it and accountability too. You know, if, if I'm sharing something and they say, I heard you say on YouTube this, but then what about this? Do you live your life this way? How do you live your life? I think that's a legitimate question. You know, that we shouldn't just accept that we can separate and segment off parts of our life and say one thing and live another way. Where's the harmony in that? Where's the joy in that? That's just talking the talk and not walking the walk. 
So those are, are ways in which, just kind of examples in which we try to really tune into it. And I feel like you shall know them by their fruits. If they're consistently peaceful, happy, joyful, that's good. That's, I would follow that if someone is consistently that way. And that's what Gandhi said one time when somebody asked him all these theological questions. Do you believe in this and this and this and this and this? Uh, Gandhi just said, why don't you come and live with me for a while? I thought, wow, I like that answer. Come and live with me. Come and see for yourself. Come and see. That is a sense of no hiding. Like I've got nothing to hide. Come for your, find out for yourself, but don't take my word for it. Just come and find out for yourself. And to me that's another way that you really get in touch with it. Because like as Armel has been sharing, it has to come it's from within you, you have the truth within you already, and you just want to find what really resonates in the core of your being. And the process of sorting out the errors and the distortions is really the process of coming to greater and greater discernment. <laughs>